When I first opened up my business, I think the biggest pressure for me was to feel like I had to invest in every single product and every single device to be successful. And that was simply not the case. And I'm so glad that I did not do that when we first opened because it would have dug me in a hole and just led me down a rabbit hole of just being unsuccessful. I, I, I agree. I also think that one of the biggest things in it's almost the mindset of beginning and starting your business with a place of I when you go to get those products and those uh, devices, you think that your business is going to be successful because you have those. You think so, you're going to sell them because uh-huh. whether it's the rep that tells you that you're going to sell this and make X amount of money yep. or you have this dream in your yep. brain without a, like an actual plan. Yeah, because everybody it, else does and they mm-hmm. can sell, but not Definitely. without a real plan and totally. not without even being a little bit established. And we've always spoken very highly of like uh, hydrofacials, uh, their whole marketing system and everything they do on their back end. But at the same time, they don't do enough to just make you buy a machine and then a client comes in the door. I can speak from personal experience. The first thing that I personally invested in when we first opened up our business was Skin Better products. Yep. And one of the biggest things that they sold me on was that I can make money online. <laughs> yeah. And it's not that simple. Yeah. And you can. You can, you definitely. definitely. Can. In my opinion, I think that to make the amount of money that they say you can make yeah. is unrealistic. Yeah. I don't, Unless I don't, you're on Instagram 24 yeah. seven and you have the perfect audience when you first yeah. start. Yeah. It's, it's really, really difficult and, and their products are expensive and you know, we sold plenty of products online, so I can't act like, you know, you've never done it, but we definitely did not sell any products online for probably the first three to four months. I, does that sound pretty close to, I don't know. I can't specifically, but it, I, I feel like it was a while yeah. to actually really sell, especially to random people. I, I think that one of the biggest pressures that I put on myself was that I compared myself to huge estheticians yeah. that maybe they have been doing this for so much longer and they actually understand and maybe they do sell online and they are successful. But when you're first opening up your business, you should not rely on that source of income. And I think that's what a lot of reps put pressure on is you can make X amount of money if you sell this X amount of treatments. And it's not realistic because when you're opening up a business, all your money is going towards the cost of your services. Yep. Yeah. And you may be breaking even, which is what we did in the beginning. I agree. I want to go back really quickly because you did just, I, I I don't want you to sound, uh, you know, hypocritical is that you say, don't, you don't need to go big. You don't need to spend all the money, but skin better was very important to you to bring on right when you open. And that's a very expensive over $2,000 opening order. So, So why was that important for you to go with and not other things? For me personally, if I didn't work with Skin Better before, not working with the company, but selling it, knowing the product, being super obsessed with their product line, I would not suggest that for the average person. But because I had personal experience with it and I loved, and I still do love Skin Better to this day, and I think it's blown up even more than when I first started, but... It's important for you. For me, Skin Better was the line that I fell in love with. I felt I knew I could sell. Gotcha. So that was my personal experience. And so whether that's you, let's say you carry a line that like you, you went to school with, invest in that. I mean, everybody starts somewhere, but it's so important to be authentic to who you're selling to. So whatever you fall in love with, I think it's really important for you to have that confidence to sell and that will get you such a long way when so you are you an esthetician. We were almost kind of, uh, we were set up for a more difficult journey because of the line you fell in love with had a, an expensive well, opening I also, order. I also had, you also have to think of the long term of who you are selling to. So gotcha. for me, I really wanted to focus on anti-aging clients and yep. I knew the type of clientele that I could attract because I had been in this space before. So whether that's 
acne, anti-aging, you know, whatever you want to specialize in. I think it's really important to carry a line that resonates with your values and who you want to be as a provider. And as we see on social media, there's a bunch of different avenues that you can go. So whatever resonates with you and whatever you can see yourself selling till the day you die is what you should invest in, in my opinion. So it's not about not investing in the big expensive things. It's just about picking which ones and when to pick Mm -hmm. them. Uh, Because then you could say you investing in skin better, which I would also argue it's probably the best thing that ever happened to our business. It attracted our dream clientele. It gave you a confidence. It gave you this boost of energy when the business opened to go, no matter what I have my, I have a, a, you know, at least $2,500 worth of my favorite product I've ever used before that I can sell. And you knew you could sell it. So it's more about not trying to do that with everything because a little bit of our story, again, you love hydrafacial too. Yeah. You loved hydrafacial too. Doesn't mean that we opened the doors with hydrafacial that took, I think three and four, three to four months to finally bring on, which that's still very quickly, but we also were able to get in a good position pretty quickly to be able to feel yeah. comfortable with taking it on. I felt in, like I asked my clients, you know, I'm thinking about bringing the service that I worked in in the past and they were super excited. So that gave me hope and I knew I could sell it. It was just making sure that it was the right timing and that when I did kind of put in that, you know, little teaser, if they would yeah. be interested or not. And I also think it's really important that whatever line, I mean, I started with a super, super small line and I still carry certain products here and that are from that lines, but I carried a very small line when I first started yeah. also. So when we, when we first started, I carried an inexpensive line, which I think gives phenomenal They're results. They're called skin still. fitness. I feel like you're like, are you gatekeeping that information? No. <laughs> the way you were saying I was saying getting it. there. Sometimes oh, okay, I sorry. take a little bit longer sorry. to get to the point. <laughs> I, but thought I was like, are you going to say it? We've talked about it before. No. This isn't a secret. I mean, it's in my, in our course and yeah. everything yeah. it's on the internet. But anyways, yeah. I, I do think that, I did invest in a, I invested in what I knew I could sell. So even if it, I started with a smaller company and then a huge company, it may not make sense to the average person, but with my background of working at a few med spas, that's what I fell in love with. So I I also worked with lines like Zio, which I didn't fall in love with personally, even Elastin skincare. So there's been a lot of different lines that I've tried and it just, I didn't fall in love with them. So these lines that I started with are lines that I was like, I can sell these. And I know that from my personal results and me having such sensitive skin that I could genuinely recommend these products to my clients and that they would be happy and attract the right clientele to people that I wanted to be long term. And maybe in the beginning, it, it was truly trial and error because we were trying specials. We were trying all these different things. But now I can confidently say that bringing on what I did in the beginning, hydrofacial skin better, you know, all these targeted anti-aging and mm-hmm. even acne lines, I, f- I filled in holes as I was growing. Mm-hmm. So I started with just standard facials and then I brought on hydrofacial and I knew eventually like, I'm like, I want to target anti-aging clients. So we started with that. And then there was holes in my, um, when people came in for appointments, I was like, oh my gosh, there's a lot of people struggling with acne. There's a lot of women struggling with hormonal acne. And I truly don't feel like, for instance, Skin Better was there for yeah. me personally in my business. And I know that a lot of estheticians have success with Skin Better. Yeah. But to me, that line is strictly just anti-aging. Yeah. You can throw in products here and there, customize it with different products. But when you're dealing with acne, it's so complex and you're yeah. you're focusing on managing it and you yeah. don't want people to go through the purging process yeah. for way longer than they have to be. Very I've, discouraging. I've, yeah, yeah, I've had people on Skin Better and maybe they went through the process six months versus yeah. face reality. They went through it within 90 days. <laughs> yeah. People within four weeks saw a difference. Yeah. So for me personally, there was so there was a gap that was missing that mm. I truly felt in my practice that I found the missing piece yeah. to my practice. So as you're growing in your practice, you have to know when to invest in those things yeah. because you're constantly listening to those things that your clients are saying. And so if I would have invested in lasers because I felt FOMO of missing yeah. out on yeah. 
all these the different things. Lace hype. Yes, yeah. that everybody else is because I didn't feel as successful. Yep. I would have dug myself in a hole and not saying that you shouldn't invest in things yep. because whatever you, because sometimes we do invest in things and it does make us go under, yep. but if you truly believe in the product, it will eventually sell and you exactly. will dig yourself out yeah. of that hole, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. And it's really easy to, yeah, it's really easy to fall into those kind of hype and what everybody else is doing and not fully understanding if it's really going to be the best for your business mm -hmm. and the best for your clients. Yeah. The gym there to me, it, circling back to like the main point of this video, the gym is that invest early on into products that you absolutely love and that you know and then find the holes as your practice grows and figure out what things that you can add on as you know your clientele. Definitely. And I think that's absolutely beautiful. Uh, I think that's an amazing piece of advice for an, a, a young esthetician that sees especially someone like you now who's established. Mm -hmm. I mean, it feels weird for us to say that because yeah. we just feel like we're struggling still sometimes, yeah. but that you're established and you offer skin better, face reality, hydrofacial, skin pen, you've done bio repeal, you have perfect derma peel. And we didn't start with all of those mm -hmm. things. And we've had to bring them on one by one and then figure out which ones worked and which ones mm -hmm. didn't work. Just like skin better. Yeah. When we placed our first skin better order, you place a lot of products that you've never bought ever again, mm -hmm. or just very rarely, yeah. right? If people need them they've bought them online because you your clientele what, what products sell the best exactly and i think in general it's easy to look at if you if you take that one scenario and look at every product line or different devices you just know mm -hmm. okay my clientele the clientele yeah. i'm building is not very interested in that and you've realized that they're going back to laser i want to talk about that a little bit why have you not brought a laser on you're anti-aging. There's plenty of anti-aging lasers. What stopped you from bringing on even a quote unquote cheaper laser like the Aerolase? I think the more that I... Aerolase? Aerolase. Air, yeah, Aerolase. I okay. think the, the more that I, that I grew in my practice, the more that I personally realized that I didn't want to expand as far as bringing on a team. And maybe I will eventually hire on a receptionist, but it, it didn't bring me passion hmm. managing somebody else. And I think that there's so much more that I want to do with this community and something that I feel is missing, something I wish that I had when I first started in, in terms of comparing myself to other successful estheticians is I don't, I know that there is community out there. I'm not saying that there isn't, but there is a lot of misleading information in this industry. And that's why I, we started this course that we're working on right now mm -hmm. is because I want there to be true community. I want there yep. to be the realness of it. And I don't want people to dig themselves into a hole. I don't want people to invest in things that aren't going to help them in the long run. And yep. we've had a lot of consultations recently where people feel the need to expand in things, but they don't realize that they need to niche down in yep. whatever they specialize in. So, um, with that being said, yeah, the pause you right there. Let me jump in. The sponsor of this week's episode is our own Patreon. Our Patreon now has officially launched. This community is growing very quickly. We've had a lot of amazing feedback so far. And this Patreon is now the exclusive sponsor of this podcast. It's what's able to keep literally keeping these lights on right now that are pointed at us, all this equipment that we're using. So please go. If you hit this description right now, you can jump in, check out all the videos on our Patreon. Uh, there's over 30 videos now, tons of amazing content, uh, all this information that we're speaking on right now, but in much more detail, there's also an exclusive community to chat with Victoria exclusively to ask her any questions about any advice, about any products that you're thinking about bringing on the whole nine. Uh, I don't know when this episode exactly is going to come out, but we are also offering free consultations to the first handful of people that jump on. We've already done quite a few, so we'll do a handful of more. We really enjoy doing them, but be sure to yeah. click the link below and jump onto that Patreon. Is there anything you want to add to that? No, that they, I mean, I, I, again, I, I really want to emphasize the importance of community in this space, and I hope that you guys can feel that the genuineness from us and just that we want you guys to succeed and learn from our past mistakes. Yep. So back to the point of investing in things. I want you to circle back really quickly. I want you to give specific advice for an esthetician who's just opening up because we're saying 
don't fall for kind of the hype and investing in everything, how do you recommend them finding the product line to carry or the first device or devices to bring on? Uh, I know there's um, a question about budget could matter if they have a big business loan, all those things could take an effect, but generally kind of what general advice would you give somebody to go, I'm interested in, I know this is kind of a blanket, a broad statement because people have different niches, but can you speak a little bit about like general advice you'd give to how to find that first product line or find that first device? I would say whatever, whatever led you to become an esthetician, Mm. find that passion of what motivated you to become that. So whether you really wanted to focus on anti-aging, acne, Whatever it is for me personally, I, I wanted to, sp- I wanted to be a makeup artist. Yeah. So for me, when I toured the school and I went to esthetician school, I realized my true passion was not, I knew I always wanted to make people feel confident in mm-hmm. their skin. But when I was covering people's acne with makeup, I didn't feel I, I just felt like a different purpose. So <laughs> yeah. find your passion of what it means for you to be an esthetician and niche down in that. Okay. It's so, and, and there's only a few ways that we can go yeah. as far as an esthetician, yeah. but let's say that you specialize in acne. Let's say that you struggled with acne. That's yeah. a really common thing that we, that a lot of people go through these days. So let's yeah. say you had a personable experience. You specialize in acne yeah. now niche down in that and don't feel pressure to bring on every single product, every single device, because it's just going to dig you in a hole when you're first starting. And something that I always tell people is that your, your, your brain and your hands are so powerful. And Mm -hmm. that's something that I had to constantly remind myself when I first started is that I have knowledge. Number one, And I have my hands and I started with facials. That's all I had. And I built a business from that. So I hope that that can give you guys some hope that when you start with your clientele, you are going to eventually have to make an investment, but study your clients, figure out what they need and start with a niche. Because if you have a base of what you want to specialize in, you'll know what to invest in in three months. Yep. And I want to talk really specifically, really quickly to the kind of the aesthetic space that's different, that's outside of the realm of facials. But I want to talk about waxing, eyelashes and eyebrows, which are also in the aesthetic niche. And I, my biggest issue with people that do any of those things, not my issue, like I got beef with you, but niche down on those things as well. And if you're somebody who does facials, don't try to br- bring on brows or eyelashes or waxing as well just to That's try to so like true. bring it on just to bring it on. I know it feels scary and we've been there. Trust me, we've been there before. When clients where are we've asking, actually like, had serious conversations about you bringing on waxing or not mm-hmm. serious. It was serious to you, but not to me because you had a, multiple clients ask you, can you wax my eyebrows real quick? And you started going like, Hey, Chris, like a wax pot's $30. Like I learned how to do it. I feel pretty comfortable. Mm -hmm. Multiple clients have asked me and we steered away mostly because we wanted to niche down with the type of client. We we didn't want you to be known as the waxer. I mean, and the more that you develop those habits, the more that you're going to develop that type of clientele. So just imagine yourself even a year from now of what you want to be doing in the treatment room. And just remember that it requires patience of what you want to be. So when you set yourself up up for success, that's you being patient and putting yourself in opportunities that is going to lead you towards that dream job that you have as an esthetician. Yep. And I hope I don't say that in a way to like discourage the eyebrows or the lashing thing, because if that's what you do, just focus on that. And if you do eyebrows, don't try to bring in facials. Yeah. Stick to that. Be the best of the best at that and offer just that because you'll get the best clients and you can raise your price of not being the jack of all trades. Don't be Mm -hmm. the person who does a little bit of everything because you have to charge the prices of does a little bit of everything. And I've seen it. I've seen a lot of estheticians that branch themselves out so far that 
you can't even like comprehend what type of clients you're getting. Yeah. You're you're, yeah. you're getting so many yeah. different Every type day, of clients. It's just something new and yeah. you have no clue so what you're in for. Something that I can speak to from personal experience is I, you know, this past year I've really focused on attracting my dream clientele and that's premium high-end clients that value my time and um just know what they're getting in for. So the type of clients you get when you offer higher prices, for instance, you, like I go into work every day and I know that people value my time. Yep. So I think it's really important. A lot to less cancellations attract, and mm-hmm. yeah, things like that. People, and you can be people, that in any niche. Yeah, yeah. And even like requiring, I know, I know it's scary in the beginning, but beginning, but requiring a card, yep. <laughs> requiring a deposit and the type of people that I get now is, Hey, I have to, can- even if they do have to cancel their appointment, they're like, please charge my card. Yeah. Or it's something very serious yeah. and we don't charge the card regardless because yeah. that's the type of clientele we bring. Exactly. But yeah, I think that was an amazing episode. I hope that everyone got some really valuable information. I hope we answered all know the questions. <laughs> yeah. If you didn't get all your question answers ju- or questions answered, jump into the Patreon, subscribe, and Victoria yeah. will d- give a deep dive specifically mm-hmm. on your business. Yeah. And just know that our Patreon is truly exclusive. It is community-based. So you will be speaking with me directly to help help with your beauty business. If you have any questions on protocols, how to shoot videos, literally anything, please, please, please comment them below or join our Patreon. Um, but thank you so much for tuning in for today's episode and I will see you next time.